Good afternoon. So, uh, gosh, last week I picked up Gangbusters, the 1920s role-playing adventure game, the BX edition by Mark A. Hunt, the basic rule book. And uh, I cannot wait to run some of this Gangbusters. I, I was a huge fan. I, I think... There was a Gangbusters with TSR back in the day, or uh, anyway, there was a mobster game. I had it. I think we ran maybe one game, uh, along with Boot Hill and uh, Top Secret. Uh, of course, the original, first edition Top Secret, one of my all-time favorite games. Uh, I probably enjoyed that in the long term more than I enjoyed um, D&D &D as I got older. Uh, however, anyway, I just wanted to share this a little bit. So Gangbusters, very, very cool. The, the book is coming in the mail, and, and it's going to be delayed thanks to uh, COVID. But um, I did get the PDF version as well, so this is pretty sweet. So I'm a huge fan of games and the genre of games that fall into some history or pseudo-history. Definitely the early turn of the century is a period of, of time. Uh, or even pre, um, you know, uh, post Civil War, Wild West, uh, again, type of uh, stuff. A Victorian era uh, is also one of my favorite periods in history, world history. Of course, uh, Victorian era, I can roll. You can roll into some Sherlock Holmes. You can roll into some, you know, some uh, uh, Jack the Ripper esque stuff. All that, all of that reminds me so much of the United Artists. Um, old horror movies, the old black and white horror movies back in the day. But one of my favorite periods in American history is that period uh, between the wars and uh, <clears throat> from 1915 to 1950. Uh, uh, and this is a fantastic, fantastic idea or fantastic period, I should say. And again, uh, we can't deny the use of BX as the single best way to... Uh, to uh, get this genre of gaming without having to learn a whole new set of rules and a whole new way of doing things, right? It's very clever. Um, it allows us to stay simple, allows us to use what we are accustomed to. But what I want to talk about uh, in this, of course, is uh, what types of games, a criminal campaign, law enforcement campaign, reporter campaign is very, very cool. This reminds me of uh, Code, um, oh God, I can't remember that, uh, Late Night, that late night reporter show that used to be on in the 70s, fantastic, kind of a weird and wacky um, uh, stuff, right? But then we got the detective campaign, which right here, Sam Spade, Maltese Falcon. I just watched the Maltese Falcon uh, about, a, about a week ago, and uh, so this is right up my alley. And then Strange Mysteries, which is pretty cool. But what's, uh, again, what's nice, the three day six straight down, we pick a class, we adjust our scores, we buy our equipment, bang, we're good to go. And we don't have to have armor as we can have a modifier of AC from our dexterity. Again, you can see this is the BX edition in that we go from minus threes to plus threes. Uh, uh, only a handful of these have a chart. <clears throat> the artwork, I think, is fantastic. The kind of a Dick Tracy look here. Uh, it identifies our ability scores. And then, of course, we have our four classes, Brutish, Educated, Connected, and Street Smart. Again, more great artwork, character classes. And then it defines these classes, restrictions, who's who, and then, of course, some of their highlights, the, Brit, the Brutish, the Educated, the Street Smart. Absolutely love this. Uh, character alignment, law-abiding, neutral, or dishonest. Now, that is fantastic, right? If we're going to be doing a a uh, party of characters may be caught up may, you know you could conceivably have a tough that 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 cracks that cracks uh, uh, that cracks bones for the mob caught up with a reporter and a detective right you could have a party of guys that are falling into all three of these as they as they um, deal with um, some other threat which would be very cool Character name, this is really neat. He gives a, a D100, uh, so you could be a Billy Legs uh, Monarch, right? Or, um, you know, uh, Diamond Jim Brady, right? So I love that, the 12th Street. Um, anyway, Common Tongue, of course, this is interesting because we get Arabic Greek. So again, we're talking about big city like New York where you have all kinds of cultures that reside in uh, these, these big... Fo these big uh, metropolitan cities, even at the turn of the century. Money and wealth, buying equipment. 
this is fantastic. I'm I really dig that they give um, they give a cost for uh, a room in this real estate. General gear is great. Uh, the prices are commiserate with the game setup, right? I don't know if they're commiserate with how much stuff actually cost in 1920, right? But uh, it doesn't make any difference. It, it's commiserate with the the system. Uh, you can see our missile weapons, machine gun. You gotta love that 1D10. This is serious business right here. Rate of fire is two. A range is pretty phenomenal. And look at the price of the machine gun, $900. Look at the weight of the machine gun. So that is pretty cool. Now the submachine gun, this would be like the Tommy gun right here. 1D8, two range, 75 feet, 25 ammo. Eight is more doable and 200 bucks. This would be the big monster you might mount on a vehicle, right? Okay, uh, let's see here. Axe, blackjack, hacket. So we got all of our melee weapons. Creating a player character goes through that, which I think is fantastic. And then this is the key. This is something that's so important to games like this for those who don't know much about the era, those who don't know much about the, the film or the literature of the era or, or even the history of the era, providing something like this, right? An understanding of the era where he lays out the history uh, um, and then gives you an idea of, the, of everything going on and prohibition in particular, which allowed adventures to exist in, say, Chicago, 1920s. Uh, piece of the action. This is interesting, too. This section describes crimes usually committed by independent criminals or gangs, right? So we have the hustle, the petty crime, the bootlegging, the obtaining bootleg liquor and beer, running a racket, which is fantastic. Rackets are gambling, prostitution, and protection. We've got specialized skills, the cut, robbery, stolen goods, police patrols, which is great. We have a starting gang, retainers, locating, hiring, uh, the types of uh, the types of those recruitment, and then the offer, retainer reaction, sidekicks, henchmen, gang members, class and level morale, and then I'm really digging. There's another one in here to say oh, running a business. Here we go. Right, uh, gives an idea of how to run a business. This changes everything, right? In the sense that we're not just uh, doing D and D, uh, D and D dungeon crawl. Right, we are doing. Uh, we are. We are playing characters in a world that might be in these situations which is fantastic right uh, then the competition the comp uh, and where is it okay you're acting as a judge working together running the game but there's one more here I want to talk about uh, designing a campaign location city where's one rock Judson is so it comes with its own big city rock Junction which is great and it defines it so you could play your games here without having to invent a whole new city Building Adventures, which is great, uh, and we can go through the types of inspiration. L.A. Confidential is a brilliant film. Big Heat's a brilliant film. Godfather's okay. The Untouchables, brilliant show. Uh, not a bad film. Once Upon a Time in America, solid. Casino, solid. Bugsy is crap, <laughs> but but it's but it's it's the time period. Uh, Donnie Brasco is pretty good. The Public Enemy is a brilliant old 1930s black and white film. White Heat, I've never seen. Believe it or not, King of New York, solid. The Bank Job. And Oh Brother, Where Art Thou? The Coen Brothers film is pretty good. So these are great. Um, yeah, Bugsy, I did not did not like. It's horrible. Um, but, you know, the, ironically here, Building Adventures, he leaves out many of the many of the things that I would use, which is the Bogart movies. Um, the film noir Bogart right um anyway call to action this is pretty interesting right these tables help you come up with answers to who what where when why and how as many of you may know Dell and i are, are writing our own game and we use what we call random seed generator and this reminds me I, I mean i literally got this like three days ago and this reminds me so much of our random seed generator right uh, I roll dice and I get debutante ball. Well, how do I fit debutante ball into what's happening in the world? It's fantastic. It even tells you who's involved. Uh, uh, if there's a body, a cause of death, where it happened, why it happened. And so this is a very clever way to do a random seed generator as this isn't just a phrase. This lets you pick all the pieces on the fly to a quick game. Uh, personalized gear. So instead of magic items, you can get specialized gear, which you know, uh, which makes sense, right? You got to have some kind of bonus equipment. But I was trying to get to the most important piece of this. Here we go: investigations, passage of time, diplomacy, contacts. This it's so important. It's so crucial in a game like this to not just assume that it's an OSR, and not just make the assumption 
that uh, because it's BX and everybody knows how to roll three dice six straight down, and you can make a character in five minutes, and that we're gonna play, uh, we're gonna play an investigator investigating a, a, a serial killer running loose in Chicago, and then just assume that a GM or players can kind of comprehend how that's gonna play out in a game, and so this is greatly appreciated that something like this shows up in an OSR for a game of a different genre than D&D Dungeon Crawl, right, basic, uh, the, the basic uh, BX, right, so I much appreciate seeing this level of focus go into this, this is what makes Gangbusters something more than just a, uh, an OSR built around the Roaring Twenties, right, we're getting more information on how to do a thing a particular way, which I think is very, very good, public opinion and counter reactions are good, Roughing, uh, roughing up and threatening, which is fantastic. Bribes, but here we go. We get into bribes. We get into limitations on bribery, and of course, non-player characters. But I wanted to get to, and I still haven't gotten there yet. Not covered by any place. What to check when things go wrong? Hard choices. Task difficulties. Fantastic. Minus four for hard stuff. Plus four for easy stuff. That's perfect. Long arm of the law. Here it is. This is the chapter I want to talk about. So part six, we're even dealing with, I mean, what if your character gets arrested? What if your character is a witness in a trial, etc.? I love this. Well, they can get busted. They can plea bargain. There's bail. There's plea bargaining. Bail recommendations. Trials. We can have trials. I love this. Paying for a lawyer. Value the witness of evidence. Evidence. Trial procedure. He covers it all. And this is what makes Gangbusters an absolute complete game, not just an OSR BX with Tommy Guns, right? Check it out. Witnesses. Who's, who's seen what? Civil suits, convicted players and characters, honesty, law enforcement resources, crime labs, coroner's office. So see, even if you don't know anything about the 20s, this book's going to help you understand the level of crime labs, right? Fingerprint files, etc. Search warrants. Uh, this is worth having, even if you didn't want to use BX for 1920s and 30s, uh, genre, uh, pulp genre type gaming, all of this information would would benefit you as a GM to understand about the time period, the culture, etc. And then we have the encounters, surprise, and distance evasion. So this is all straight out of BX, distance measurement, group movement, drowning, movement, light, darkness, climbing, hidden dangers, searching, traps, poison, toxins, locked doors, shooting off locks, I love it. Kicking down doors, right? Vehicles in combat. And this is the other thing you cannot ignore from the Roaring Twenties, the drive-by, right? The birth of the Tommy Gun drive-by. And you're going to have the Keystone Cops chasing down the bad guys, right? Think Or bootleggers, right? On the run in the uh, countryside. So we've got to have chases. We've got to have shooting from vehicles. We've got to have destruction of vehicles. Repairing vehicles. Riding on running boards. Perfect. Perfect. And then, of course, we have vehicles. Hit points, armor class, etc. Wondering adversaries indoors and in the streets. Adversary statistics, right? And then we have our bestiary, right? Our beasts, the fanatic, the femme fatale, the gangster. It's just so well done. And again, you can see it's traditional armor class, hit die, move, attacks, damage, number appearing, morale, contacts, alignment, and any specials. Backup. Plus one to hit when supporting a fellow officer, right? So that's pretty cool. So when the when a backup uh, cop comes uh, running along, they're going to get a plus one when helping out another officer. So that's kind of neat. Reporter, a stage magician, right? Soldier, thugs. So this is so good. Morale, optional rule. Morale checks when to check morale. Nerve check. A character's nerve is tested whenever something happens to the character that can cause them to doubt their steadiness, courage, and sense of purpose when facing a demanding situation. The judge will decide when such a role is needed. So that is cool. Um, combat. Of course, then we get into the sequence of events. Now, this is something I've talked about with Dale, for instance, in our conversation the other day, that uh, procedures or sequence of events is what makes games cumbersome. And you are meant to follow these things in this sequence. But again, BX is so easy to tweak. You can pay fast and loose with this, uh, with this procedure. Uh, let's see here. Actions in one round. Attacking. Attack rolls. Half cover. Third cover. Total cover. High ground. Missile weapons. So again, we have all of those tactics. Firearms. Burst. Spray. 
Um, let's see your damage rolls. Look at this. Both barrels. Only double barreled shotguns may be used to fire both barrels. When firing both barrels, the attacker expends both shells at once, granting an additional damage die on successful hits at short range. Ooh, that is sweet. That is so sweet. Uh, anyway, I just had to share this because I'm so impressed that this isn't just this isn't just a cosmetic change to Dungeons and Dragons BX, right? This is straight up a, a complete rule set. Um, and so, so nice. And I love this. Saving throws. Moxie. Resist something with grit, willpower. Quickness. Resist something with reaction speed. Toughness. Resist something with endurance. Driving. Control. Understand. Handle. How smart is it to make driving a saving throw when you're going to have chases? It's brilliant. And then uh, instead of perception checks, we have observation saves. So cool. How do you use saving throws as driving and observation? Truly ingenious, honestly. Um, and then we have our saving throws for these things, right? Driving. So look at the brute. Not a great driver. Not great. Not very observant. Connected. Eh. But the educated, solid driving. Great obser solid observation. So very cool. Standard combat charts. Character attacks by level. Right, so we can see that against a traditional armor class of nine, uh, what it takes to hit adversary attacks. So, if you have an armor class of nine against a hit die thug, he can hit you on an eight up weaponry, mysterious powers. Now, this would be if you wanted to do, um, I won't say Dick Tracy, but you want to do like the Green Hornet type thing, right? Uh, the masked bandit and uh, some of the powers they can have, which is so cool, right? So you could do almost a detective. You could do almost Batman-like detective. Uh, the original Batman was more an investigator uh, than he was a um, superhero, right? And then the bibliography here, All the King's Men is a brilliant book and a brilliant film. Grand Hotel, i not a big fan, but Hard Times is a fantastic film with Charles Bronson. Last Man Standing, solid. Uh, let's see here. I'm looking for the stuff I've seen. Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, solid. Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, solid. Paper Moon. The Sting, of course, a uh, phenomenal film with Redford and um, uh, Paul Newman. Uh, let's see here. Mr. Motive, not a big fan of these. Philip Vance aren't bad, but I'm not a huge fan. Thin Man aren't bad. They're very formulaic. Not a big fan of these others. Uh, let's see here, uh, Newspaper Press, His Girl Friday is a masterpiece of comedy of Cary Grant. Uh, I cover the waterfronts, a great film, I own that. Um, the Big Sleep, one of my all-time favorite bogey films. Chinatown, Jack Nicholson is, is, is a phenomenal screenplay. Uh, Maltese Falcon, again, everybody knows the Maltese Falcon. Murder My Sweet is a fantastic film noir. Bring It Baby Solid, uh, one of my favorite Cary Grant comedies. Mr. Lucky's a great film. My Man Godfrey's very good. Uh, again, so many of these are uh, comedies. For instance, um, His Girl Friday's definitely, but it is a newspaper film. That's why it's under that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ken City Massacre. Uh, I don't know much about that one. The Lady in Red. Uh, Boardwalk Untouchables Television. I own the Untouchable series, which is really good. Pinky Blinders, uh, Binders. I've seen a couple of those. Anyway, I gotta give. Um, uh, and then I love the character sheet. Right, it's just instantly recognizable for those who played uh, uh, Moldvay BX. Uh, totally recognizable, except for, of course for these saving throws, and then your target to hit numbers. Absolutely love this. And then, of course, uh, on the book itself, let me pull this up. The book itself, the back cover, um, gives you, on, whoops, on the back of the box, you get missile weapons, melee weapons, and all the charts you need on the back of the book. So I can't wait for that book to get here. And then it has a, a, a whoops, I was just in that. It has a green uh, cover in, uh, provided with this. I don't think I'm going to get the green cover Maybe I get the green cover for this instead of the red cover. I'm not certain what I'll get, but I think it's the red cover for this. Anyway, Mark Hunt, fantastic. And um, Glenn Halstrom, I believe that is Old Man Grognard, I believe is Glenn. Maybe, maybe not. I may have the wrong guy, so please forgive me if I do. But congratulations, gents. This is fantastic. And uh, I cannot wait to run this um, this version of BX. So anyway, thanks for listening. 
kind of a quick look see I don't want to you know spend a whole lot reading the game to anybody but I wish I had to share this for those of you interested I think this is like fourteen dollars in paperback I don't know how much it was for the PDF because I just bought the whole bundle but fantastic there's quite a few little modules available too as PDFs for this uh, on um, drive-through RPG as well okay bye bye